welcome to again the course digital system design now uh, in last two lectures we have discussed different number system and then we have discussed how to convert a particular number from one base to another base in the number systems we have discussed uh, the most followed number system that's a decimal number system then in the context of uh, computers we have discussed binary number system and octal as well as hexadecimal number systems in the subsequent lecture we have discussed how to convert one number from one base to another base now in this lecture we are going to discuss about complements of number the topic is quite important considering the different mathematical operations done in the digital computer systems so complements of uh, numbers especially we are talking about the binary numbers so complements are used in digital co computers for basically two purposes the first one is to simplify the subtraction operation that means what you have to keep in mind that we are going to discuss the complement of numbers in the context of subtraction operation which is done in digital computers so this particular complements of binary numbers is very useful in simplifying the subtraction operations which is done in digital computers and then the logical manipulations also that means a boolean expression may be there and that particular boolean expression is going to be manipulated for simpler results and what it is going to be used for and how it's going to be uh, beneficial for the end user because if the simple if the circuit is going to be a simple one less number of gate and transistors are required and then obviously less cost and more compact circuit will be there that means functionality wise digital circuit if you want recall the point that overall objective of the design is the speed should be high and the number of components to perform or to realize a particular task must be uh, as low as possible this is the objective depending on the application to application this is going to be changed but the the objective should be like this one so the complements are also helping to achieve this objective then for each base r systems how many types of complements are there so for each base r system two types of complements are there that means if you are talking about base r systems if you recall then we have talked about decimal then we have talked about decimal then binary then hexadecimal and octal also that means here r was equal to 10 here r was equal to 2 here r was equal to 16 and here r was equal to 8 that means base of the number that's also called base or radix of the system so we all have discussed this four types of number systems so we are talking about this complement of numbers in the context of these four number systems only all the although the same concept can be extended to any number system but here primarily we are going to concern with the binary number system only so for each number system two types of complements are there first one the first one name is radix or r's complement both names are same only it is called radix complement or r's complement and the second one is this first one and the second one is diminished radix or r minus 1's complement although as compared to the radix or diminished radix it is quite easy or convenient to remember r's complement the first one and second one r minus 1's complement okay so two type for any number system two types of complements are going to exist first one is r's complement and the second one is r minus 1's complement so suppose for the binary number system this is also called base 2 that means r is equal to 2 base or radix is equal to 2 so for binary number system the first one will be r's that means 2's 2's complement and the second one will be obviously r minus 1 that means 2 minus 1 that is 1's complement okay so for binary number system two's complement and one's complement of a particular binary number we can calculate similarly for the base 10 or also called 
decimal number system. So that is for that one r is equal to 10. So 10's complement and then r minus 1 that means that means 10 minus 1 that is 9's complement. So we have decided that we are going to study for binary number system two types of complements will be there. First one is radix that means r's complement that will be called as a 2's complement and r minus 1's complement that means 1's complement and then for decimal number system it will be r's complement that means 10's complement and r minus 1's complement that means 9's complement. Please note that the same convention is going to be used for the hexadecimal as well as octal number system also. So, if I am going to say the same thing for hexadecimal number system, it will be 16's complement that means R's complement and R minus 1 that means 15's complement for hexadecimal number system. Similarly, for the octal, if I am going to say R's complement, that means I am going to say that it is 8's complement and if it is going to R minus 1's complement, then obviously it will be 8 minus 1 that is a 7's complement. Hope the things are clear. The first one we are going to discuss is r minus 1's complement. So, uh, you need not to worry that why I am not going to start the r's complement because of the definitions and the ease of understanding between the two complements, it is good to start with the r minus 1's complement. So, let us start the discussion that for a given number n in base r, base r that means base can be depending on the number system. If it is a decimal, it will be 10 and if it is a binary, it will be 2. Having n digits, suppose a binary number is there 1010. So, I am going to say that it is a number n, n is equal to 1010 and this is binary number system. So, radix will be 2 and the small n will be equal to 4. Is that clear? So, it is defined as that means r minus 1's complement is equal to r power n minus 1 minus capital N r is the radix base, small n is the number of digits, 1 is digit, one number digit and n is the number. So, this is a formula to get r minus 1's complement of a particular number n having n digits and base r. So, how to get these 9's complement and 1's complement? This is uh, we are talking about r minus 1's complement. So, for decimal number system, it will be 9's complement and for binary number system, it will be 1's complement. So, for, for decimal number system, for decimal number system, r will be equal to 10. So, I am going to put the value 10. So, 10 power, suppose number I am going to take as a 12. So, this is n, n is equal to 12 and r will be equal to 2 because this is a decimal number system will have a base of 10. So, 10 power small n number of digits that is a 2. So, the number will be 100 formula says minus 1. So, I will get 99 and then what I got 99 the number n that means the number n that is equal to 12 is going to be reduced from this one. So, 12 it is a 7 and then 8. So, the final answer is 87. So, what I got that for a number 12, it is 9's complement will be equal to 9's complement will be equal to 87, okay, using the formula only. So, this is the final statement we have written here that to get the 9's complement of a decimal number, subtract each digit from 9 and if you look at the number n and the result that is the 9's complement. If you are going to subtract this number from 99, that means each digit must be subtract from 9 and you will get the result. And this is what it is written here, that to get the 9's complement of a decimal number, you should subtract each digit from 9 and you will get the r minus 1's, that means 9's complement. Similarly, for the binary number, suppose I have written the binary number 101, this is the capital N is equal to 2, here R is equal to 2 because it is a binary number and the number of digits are 3. Is that okay? 
for a binary number n is equal to 101 the base or radix will be equal to 2 and the total number of digits are 3 this is the formula i am going to show you that how the statements are justified to get the r minus 1's complement what it says that subtract each digit from 1 so i am going to first i am going to use this particular formula to get the value so r is equal to 2 and power n that's 3 so the number will be 8 this number will be 8 and i have to subtract 1 that's 1 in binary 8 in binary will be equal to this one and then i have to subtract 1 from this one First, I will go through this particular one, subtract each digit from 1. So, the number may be this one, n is equal to 101 and for this set, subtract each digit from 1. So, I am going to take this number 111 and then 101. I am going to subtract this n with 1 minus each number, each digit. So, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Look, this was the number given in the binary. We have to find out 1's complement of the number and we got 1's complement like this one. If you notice, the number 1 changes to 0, the number 0 changes to 1 and the 1 changes to 0. That means, due to the nature of this formula and the process, if we apply this formula also, we will get the results the same and it means that when we apply the formula for the binary numbers to get the r minus 1's complement, the end result will be like uh, to get the r minus 1's that means 1's complement, we have to simply change the digit 1 to 0 and then if the digit is 0, we have to change it to 1. If the number is 1, change it to 0. If the number is 0, change it to 1 and you will get the result for r minus 1 that means 1's complement in case of binary please note that that means what has been decided that to get 9's complement subtract each digit from 9 in case of decimal number system in case of binary number system subtract each digit from 1 or more simply change 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 you will get the result and similarly for the octal and hexadecimal numbers also that means, if I am going to talk about the octal number system, r is equal to 8 and then I have to subtract each digit from 7. I will get 7's complement. And then, if in case of hexadecimal number, since r is equal to 16 and if I am going to ask about 15's complement, then I have to subtract each digit from 15 and I will get the 15's complement. This is how we are going to get the numbers. The second one, that is a radix or r's complement. Similar case we have taken here also, that given number is n and the base is r and the total digits are n. So, it is defined as r power n minus n. If you notice earlier, the formula was r power n minus 1 minus n. Only the 1 is different here. That means earlier it was r power n minus 1 and then minus n. This was the r minus 1's complement and here it is r's complement. Only the digit 1 is different here and it is going to be a good relationship between r's and r's complement while calculating the different complements. We will discuss this point again while dealing with the numericals. Here again it is written that this simply means that to get r's complement, that means here what we are talking about, add 1 to the r minus 1's complement. Since r minus 1's complement, as we seen just few seconds ago, that this was like that one only. If I am going to add 1 in this particular one, this is going to be cancelled and we will get r power mi n minus 1 n. That means, if I am going to add 1. So, what you have to remember based on the formula of the two complements that if you are going to add 1 to the r minus 1's complement, you will get the r's complement. Okay. If you are going to add 1, digit 1 
to the r minus 1's complement, you are going to get the r's complement. So, how to calculate? So, uh, here we are talking about r's complement. So, we will talk about the in case of decimal number system, we will talk about the 10's complement. In case of binary number system, we will talk about the 2's complement. So, for r is equal to 10, what we have to do? Add 1 to the 9's complement. So, if the digit was 12 and 9's complement was 9's complement was subtract each digit from 9. So, obviously, I will get 87 and to get the 10's complement, I have to add 9's complement plus 1. That means, the answer will be 88. Is that clear? Hope this is clear. For base 2, that means in case of binary number system, if I have to obtain 2's complement, then add 1 to the 1's complement. The same number, if the number is 101 and I am looking for 2's complement, so what is recommended that first I should go for the 1's complement. You can obviously apply the formula also to get the value and the results will be same obviously. So, 1's complement the method was, the methodology was change 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 because each and every digit is going to be subtract from digit 1. So, obviously, I am going to get 0, 1, 0 and then to get the 2's complement, I have to add 1. So, 0, 1, 0 plus 1. So, 0, 1, 1. This is the 2's complement of the number. Similarly, for octal and hexadecimal number, that means in case of octal, we have to obtain 8's complement and the number will be, number is going to be obtained by 7 complement plus 1 and in case of hexadecimal number, 16 complements is going to be calculated like 15's complement plus 1 and this is how we can obtain R's complement that means in case of decimal, it will be 10's complement, in case of binary, it will be 2's complement, in case of octal, it will be 8's complement and in case of hexadecimal, it will be 16's complement and the same all can be obtained by their r minus 1's complement plus 1. For all, get the here, in case of decimal, get the 9's complement plus 1. In case of binary, get the 1's complement plus 1. In case of 8's complement, octal number system, get the 7's complement plus 1 and in case of hexadecimal, take the 15's complement plus 1 and you will get the R's complement or red X complement. Then these are the sub few examples we are going to discuss. First, we will, I will demonstrate you that uh, what should be the answer. So, 9's complement of this particular decimal number. Please note that using formula also I can calculate. So, 9's complement that means we are talking about R minus 1's complement. So, r minus 1's complement, the formula was r power n minus 1 minus n. But we have derived the methodology to get directly the values, although you can calculate from here also. That means, r is equal to 10. The numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 minus 1 and then the number and you will get the 9's complement of that particular number. Although, what we have suggested, what we have got the final recommendation that to get the 9's complement of that number, subtract each digit from 9. So, I will start from the right side. So, I will get 9, 9, 2, 3, 5 and 4. Okay. 1's complement of this number, 1's complement, simply change the again same formula r power n minus 1 then minus capital N the number or this is the case of binary. So, we can just convert the number from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 to get the 1's complement. Again, I will start from the right side 1, 1, 1, then 0, 0, then 1, then 0. Then this is the 10th we have to obtain 10's complement of the number and the number is this one. So, first I have to obtain 9's complement of the number and then add 1. So, 9's complement, I have to subtract each digit from 9. So, it is a 1, 0, start from the right side, 
वन जीरो सिक्स सेवन एट एंड देन नाइन ऑल सिक्स डिजिट यस इट्स ओके एंड देन प्लस वन सो दैट मीन्स दिस डिजिट विल बिकम टू एंड सिमिलरली फॉर दिस वन टू इज कॉम्प्लीमेंट सो वन इज कॉम्प्लीमेंट वन इज कॉम्प्लीमेंट प्लस वन सो वन इज कॉम्प्लीमेंट इज इक्वल टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द राइट साइड वन वन जीरो जीरो वन डबल जीरो एंड देन एड वन सो वन वन जीरो वी गॉट कैरी ऑफ वन सो वन वन अगेन जीरो एंड दिस इज वन जीरो वन डबल जीरो इफ यू कैन रिमेंबर वी विल चेक द वैल्यूज इट विल अपियर ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड दिस इज द नंबर एंड दिस इज द नंबर यस फोर फाइव थ्री टू डबल नाइन फोर फाइव थ्री टू डबल नाइन यू कैन चेक द वैल्यूज वी गॉट दिस ऑल ओके सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन कैलकुलेट द आर्स इन एनी फॉर एनी नंबर सिस्टम आर आर माइनस वन कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर नंबर वेन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दैट वॉट द स्टेटमेंट सेज दैट द कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ द कॉम्प्लीमेंट प्लीज कंसेंट्रेट ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्ड ओनली द कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ द कॉम्प्लीमेंट री स्टोर्स द नंबर ऑफ टू इट्स ओरिजिनल वैल्यू एंड द सिंपल मीनिंग इट सेल्फ मेक सेंस दैट इफ यू आर गोइंग टू टेक द कॉम्प्लीमेंट टू टाइम्स यू विल गेट द ओरिजिनल नंबर बैक ओके सो हाउ इट मेक सेंस मैथमेटिकली वी कैन ऑल्सो प्रूव दैट आर्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ नंबर इज दिस वन ओके एंड इफ आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अगेन द कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ दिस नंबर Ars complement of the number is this one. If I am going to take again the complement of complement, that means I am going to take the ars complement of this number. So now this will be the number, and I have to subtract this number from r power n. So r power n minus this number, and when I will simplify this, this is going to be done minus minus plus. So I will get my number original. Similarly for the r minus one's complement again, r minus one's complement was. R power n minus one, n minus whole number one. If I am going to take again the R minus one's complement of the number, now this is the number, and I have to go for R power n minus one, and then R power n minus one minus n. Now this time this is the number. If I am going to simplify this one, this is all going to be cancelled out, and we will get n. That means you have to keep this in mind that two times complement of a particular number will give back the number in original. Similarly for the r same for the case of r's complement and r minus one's complement. One example, it can be simply demonstrated also. Nine's complement of a number subtract each digit from nine, so I will get here two. Here three and one, eight, nine minus one eight. So this is now this is the number. Nine's complement of one six seven is eight three two. Now I'm again going to take the nine's complement of the number eight three two. So that is called complement of complement. So nine's complement of eight three two is nine nine nine, and then eight three two. Each digit must be subtracted from nine, and I will get six one six seven. this proves that the statement which we made in the first one first point that complement of a complement is back to its original value then again important point in the context of uh, complement of numbers itself is because as what we discussed in the first slide that complements of the numbers are going to simplify the subtraction process in Digital computers. We are also going to discuss signed and unsigned binary numbers. But before that, we will start the discussion with the how negative numbers are going to represent in binary number systems. Before that, if you recall, in elementary school mathematics, we are used to use the integers on a scale zero. So right hand side all positive integers, negative hand side, uh, left hand side it's a all negative integers. So we do understand that nine 
that means without sign whether it is a plus or minus that is assumed as plus 9 only and if we are going to make it clear that the number is negative we have to put a minus sign in front of the as a prefix to that particular number. So, positive and negative integers this is what we do understand, but please note that in digital computers we have to assign some variables which can differentiate between the two that means a variable which is going to stored in the memory that must be assigned that whether it, the variable can represent both positive as well as negative numbers or only positive integers positive numbers. But I want to say that this is a part of the memory system and if you want to store a variable a, so you have to decide that this particular variable name with a is going to store both positive which can store with both positive or negative numbers or only the positive numbers because the representation wise the things are going to be different and that is why the topic signed and unsigned binary number system. So, please note that a numeric value is signed if it can represent both positive and negative numbers that is what we want to say that the plus 9 9 it is a unsigned number unsigned file both numbers are same, but this is signed number minus 9 also signed number, but 9 without any sign is unsigned number. So, a numeric variable is signed if it can represent both positive and negative numbers and an unsigned number can only represent non-negative numbers 0 or positive numbers and this is what the difference between signed and by unsigned binary number representation. This is the important point that in digital computers everything must be represented with binary digits that means there is no provision like put a minus sign in the hardware of the digital computers that means we have to take care with the help of binary numbers only binary digits only to represent anything which is going to take care of both positive and negative numbers or it is going to be an unsigned number. So, what conventions we generally follow? Leftmost bit is reserved for the sign. If we are going for the sign binary representations, we will keep this leftmost bit, these are the numbers. Let this particular bit is reserved for the sign. What we use? If the leftmost bit is going to be 0, we assume that this is a positive number, and if this is 1, this is going to be a negative number. Up to this point, it is clear that two types of representation is possible signed as well as unsigned. Sign number can represent positive as well as negative numbers, while unsigned number can represent only positive numbers. So, what convention we follow? That leftmost bit in the binary string, in a particular string having binary digits, the leftmost bit will be reserved for the sign. This bit is reserved for the sign and if this is 0, we will assume that this is positive number and if it is going to be 1, we are going to assume that it is negative number. Some points to remember in this particular discussion, leftmost bit represents sign, this is the sign binary number or the sign binary number, unsigned binary number, leftmost bit is MSB. That means, if I am going to talk about the signed representation, and the number is 11011. So, this particular says that whatever the value of this number will be 2 power 0 1, 2 power 0 that is 1, 2 power 1 that is 2, that is 4 and 1 to 4 8. So, the number is 8 to 10 11. So, this number is going to be minus 11 because the representation is signed representation. So, the leftmost bit is reserved for the sign and since the digit is 1, so the sign will appear minus and this is the equivalent binary number. So, if I am going to say that in sign binary representation, the number is 110011, so the equivalent number will be minus 11. But if I am going to say that no, the number is same only, but I am going to represent this same number in unsigned number. So, 
this is like the leftmost bit will be this is LSB, least significant bit and this will be MSB. That is a normal binary convention and obviously the number will be equal to 8, then 2 power 3, 2 power 4 that means 16. So, the number will be 16, 8, 24, 24, then 26, 27. So, the number in unsigned will be equal to 27. That is the difference. Again, we have given the example also 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 if unsigned. Unsigned that means we do not have to take care about the sign or uh, leftmost bit as a 0 or 1. Uh, we will go through the place values and then calculate the value. So, it is 9 because 2 power 0 1 and 2 power 3 0 1 2 3 that is 8. So, number is 9, but please note that if it is signed binary representation, the leftmost bit is reserved for sign and the number will be plus 9. Similarly, for the 1 1 double 0 1 if this is unsigned. So, 2 power 0 1 and then 1, 1 2 3 8 and then 16. So, 16, 8, 24, then 1, 25. If it is an unsigned number, this is MSB. If it is a unsigned binary number, leftmost bit is MSB. That means, we go for the conventional place value and calculate the equivalent number. But if this is a signed binary representation, this bit is reserved for the sign and the sign digit is 1. So, the sign will be negative and the rest number is 9 only. So, this is minus 9. So, what we discussed that uh, number can be represented in signed as well as unsigned binary number and variable which is store the value. If it is a signed binary representation, it can represent positive as well as negative numbers, but if it is unsigned, it can only represent positive numbers. We will return to this particular topic again when we are going to discuss subtraction operations using complement. Thank you.